Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com joins us today as we talk about what we've seen so far at spring training, whether we've got some concerns and uh, some people blowing things out of proportion a little bit. What does everybody need to relax about? Plus, uh, which Cardinals are poised to take off in 2024? And who does he think is going to make uh, the, the final roster and be on the bench for the Cardinals when things get started at the end of the month? This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals. Your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. That way you're interacting with us. Hit the notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. We're making that grind for 10,000 subscribers before opening day. So if you're somebody who stops by each and every day, just give us a like and subscribe. It's going to take you just a second. And it does us a, a wonderful amount of good when you do that. So uh, this is for you. This is a show that serves Cardinal Nation and gives the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. You'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. First and foremost, we want to welcome in our guy, Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com, joining us today. To talk a little bit of baseball, Thomas, how are we on this uh, first of March, a Friday? Well, here we are, man. Yeah, I'm doing well. It's taken us a while to get to March, it feels like, but it feels good to have some baseball, that's for sure. Uh, things have been interesting so far uh, with for the Cardinals at spring training. Number one story, obviously, which caught uh, a few of us off guard, was the fact that the Cardinals brought in longtime San Francisco Giants shortstop Brandon Crawford. We've had a couple of ties. Uh, the bullpen competition has been pretty fierce. I've been really impressed with how things have gone so far, specifically for the Cardinals pitching staff um, and specifically the bullpen. You actually just did an article at redbirdrants.com. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, make sure you guys get over there for all of the entertainment value that they offer you when it comes to uh, different stories about rumors and news like they cover each each and every day brand new stuff getting posted all the time and you put one out about four overreactions to the beginning of spring training and give me one of those overreactions right now because i know cardinals fans get worked up i would imagine every fan base gets worked up about the little things in spring training and they start freaking out about whatever it is that's upsetting them what is one of the things that you want Cardinals Nation to just kind of take a step back and just relax for a second. It's got to be the home runs. I think we're going on – the game's on right now, five innings in, still no home run in spring training, nearing 70 innings at this point. Um, I would imagine that the lack of power is probably the biggest overreaction. I mean, this team was 12th last year in the league with home runs per game, over one. They'll be fine. Goldschmidt, Arnado, Newt Bar, Walker, Gorman, all those guys are almost locks to hit 20 home runs. I, I think that's one of the biggest overreactions at the moment. Yeah, I actually just posted something on our uh, Twitter feed or X, whatever you want to call it, at LO underscore Cardinals, uh, a little poll. Just put, poking a little fun at it, like who's going to hit the first – Spring training home run for the Cardinals. I, I gave you, you know, like the top three guy. I gave you Gorman, Goldie, and Arenado. And then option number four, because that's all they let me do, was nobody. A power outage. They don't <laughs> hit any this spring. It's for fun, guys. Like, it's okay. It, it, it's not It's not like the Cardinals are giving up, like, four and five of them a yeah. game either. And, like, the ball is just flying out of the yard in Florida right now for anybody. Like, it's not really happening. Although, I guess we saw a couple of uh, big flies go off of Gibson uh, yesterday, yeah. which had yeah. people freaking out about that. So perhaps maybe that's something that is in your article as well. But uh, check that out at redbirdrants.com. Um, who do you think 
if you had to make a guess, who do you who do you think it is that uh, ends up hitting the first home run of the spring for for the Cardinals? Your 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 thoughts, Thomas? Probably Lars Newport, mainly mm. because he's the next guy up who could hit a home run. Who's scheduled to play? I mean, Gorman, Nato, Goldie, and Contreras all play today. I would assume they get rest tomorrow. So Newport probably would be the guy. He's going with new. Yeah, there was a bunch of guys that I couldn't put in the tweet because, again, they only give you four options. But, yeah, you know, Donnie, Newt, Contreras, you know, yeah, like all of these guys. What if Crawford does it? That's somebody (laughs) that that would be hilarious. For me, whenever he gets into game action, we don't know when that's going to be just yet. But uh, I don't know. That's just one of the things people should calm down about. And again, if you want to read the full article about what are some of the other things that Thomas is like, just chill out. For just a second, we're only uh, a week or so into this thing. You can read that at redbirdrants.com. Now, uh, one of the things I want to talk about, we brought up Brandon Crawford, uh, is uh, his addition to the team here in spring training. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on that? Uh, personally, I thought it, I thought it was a good move. I, I think they needed somebody. They Jose for means fine, but when somebody who's got a, a resume like Crawford's available, I thought it was smart that the Cardinals scooped him up. Yeah, absolutely. I think in a vacuum by itself, Brandon Crawford makes a ton of sense. He's a veteran, which is what they've been targeting this offseason. He plays a premium position, and he plays it well defensively. He can give Mason Wynn some advice and some help at shortstop there. And he's a good enough bench bat. I know his last two years, he's had an OPS plus, pretty negative. But, I mean, you go back just two years, 2021, and he was an MVP candidate almost. So, He's got the pedigree. He's got the history. He's got the experience to bring in. So if it were just Brandon Crawford by himself, I'd be fully okay with it. But something I keep going back to is Brandon Crawford plus Matt Carpenter. It just doesn't seem to make too much sense to have these two guys paired together on the bench. It's odd. It's almost like they painted themselves in a corner by agreeing to a contract with Carpenter early on. And now it's like, oh, yeah, so about that, Matt. But we're going to get into that. A little bit later when we talk about uh, who we think is going to be on this team as far as position players, because the bullpen stuff a little tougher to uh, a little tougher to predict right now because a lot of guys are pitching very well. So uh, it, uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. But uh, as far as the, the the position players and the bench bats, I mean, we've got some clarity of what's probably going to happen. So we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, later on. Uh, I also want to get into um, an article that you put out about guys who are poised to break out in 2024 because there are a number of guys on this roster that you know that they're at that point in their career where they could take off and then there's a couple other guys you have in there that veterans that you're looking for bounce back years Mm so uh we're going to get into that discussion coming up next with thomas govain from redbirdrants.com on locked on cardinals Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. What could you do with $150 right now? Say you you end up winning your bet, you got $150. What, what is something you would like to do with that? I, I'm, I'm currently moving residences and uh there's plenty of stuff that I, that we need for the new place that i could spend it on maybe you're in a similar place maybe you're going on vacation soon now that it's spring hey, whatever it is you could end up making some money here with fanduel bet on all your favorite nba players and teams with the quick bets live same game parlays exclusive props and a whole lot more and the great thing about betting on the nba and in sports in general is just all of the different ways that you can actually place your bets and win money You know, with basketball, you've got points, field goals, three-pointers, free throws, assists, steals, turnovers, offensive and defensive rebounds. I mean, there's just a slew of things. And whomever your favorite players or teams are, you can bet on their success or you can bet on the failures of the teams they're playing against. It's entirely up to you. It just kind of enhances the experience uh, of watching the game, whether it's NBA, whether it's going to be Major League Baseball, any of them, to be honest. So new customers, once again, get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA.
Once again, we're joined by Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com. A reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today available now on the Free Fire TV channels app. And thank you guys for making Lockdown Cardinals your first listen every day. Uh, when it comes to each and every show, we love hearing from you, your comments, positive or negative. I mean, you could disagree with everything we say on this show, and that's fine. That's your prerogative. Let's have a discussion about it. So uh, get into that comment section or hit us up on Twitter X anytime you want. You can uh, hit up Thomas Govain. We're going to talk about one of his articles right now at Thomas Govain on uh, Twitter X as well. So, um People who are poised, players who are poised to break out in 2024. Now, you put together a list that included six players. Now, we're not going to give you all of them because we want you to check it out at redbirdrants.com, but we're going to give you half of them. We're going to give you half the list here, and the first one we're going to start with happens to be a pitcher, happens to be in the starting rotation, but he's not one of the new guys. Who'd you go with, Thomas? I picked Steven Matz for this this last spot on the article there. Okay. And what is it about Steven Matz that makes you think that he is poised for a breakout? Because I know everybody's going to come at you and go, Oh, Mr. Injury himself, Steven Matz, the guy who's been sent to the bullpen twice now, since he's been in a Cardinals uniform. Why is it Steven Matz is somebody that you think could be one of those guys that is poised for uh, a breakout bounce back year here in 2024. I've seen a lot coming out especially today, I think the post-dispatch even had something about how he's preparing for his health more often. He's been doing physical therapy over the off season before he was pitching to get him ready to go and, and help his recovery process. Um, if you go back to 2021, it was his last year at the Blue Jays right before we signed him. He pitched 150 innings and that was the third or fourth season out of his seven years in which he exceeded that mark. So yes, he's got the injury history, but he also has the ability to pitch a, almost a full slate of starts in a season um he's always been a ground ball pitcher with a bit of a strikeout touch to him and i think that bodes well for bush stadium uh he could realistically be the number two starter for the cardinals assuming he's healthy pitches honestly my mark in my mind is 130 innings for him to reach and if he surpasses that I'd, I'd see it as a successful season for him i i can hear fans right now going what did you just say steven matz is going to be your number two. And here's why I think it's not that far-fetched. I mean, you know, you know, Kyle Gibson is what he is. Lance Lynn, you're hoping, is back to more like what he was in 2021. Uh, Miles Michaelis looked pretty good the other day in his first start of the spring. But you saw the dominance that Steven Matz had at the end of last year. Like, after he went to the bullpen, figured out whatever it was that was going on with him that was causing whatever issues – they got him off to that really rough start last year, and he was outstanding yeah. over the last few starts of his. And I, I do want to point out that I know they weren't always against the, the greatest competition. He played against a lot of teams that weren't exactly playoff contenders. But the fact is, he was dominating in those games, too. It wasn't like he was just getting by with like three or four earned runs. Like he was carving people up, and then unfortunately – the injury bug got him again, and he got that lat injury. But he was really, really good at the end of the year, and it was unfortunate how his season ended. Yeah, it was. And he was a 2.7 F4 player just two years ago, which I know we're itching for four, five war guys, but you don't need that out of a number two starter. Somewhere around that three F3 three war mark is, is great. And if Steven Matz would have had a full slate of games like he finished at last year, he would absolutely reach that mark. So I think he has the potential to be number two, given his health, which is a pretty big question mark. All right, so let's move on. So we we are hoping for good things from Steven Matz. We'll give you the, the we'll give you the reasons why it's something that can happen. All right, let's move on to a guy who uh, came onto the team at the end of last year. Really, really struggled in his first time in major leagues, but a guy that top prospect in the organization. And if you ask people around baseball their thoughts on what Mason Wynn is going to be, people have glowing reviews about him. And I, I think a lot of people are a little bit tainted from what they saw in September. What is it about Mason Wynn in your eyes that makes you think he's one of those guys that's poised to have a big year in 2024? 
He has a really sturdy floor between his defense and his speed. I mean, he's got an 80-grade arm. He's got 70-grade speed, I think, 65 or 70. So he can steal bases, and he can field the ball. And those two things alone set him up pretty well to have a good season. If you throw in his improvement as he's grown com comfortable with uh, each level in his baseball career, you'll see his offensive numbers grow as well. He's projected for an 88 OPA OPS+, plus, which is below average, but if he can improve his walks a little bit and tap into just a little bit more power, he'll be an average offensive player with a very strong glove and great speed. He's batting 500 in spring right now. He's got a stolen base. He had a cannon of a throw last week. So he's showing off all of his skills already. And let's not forget last spring, uh, he was the standout guy yeah. in the spring. Like, I mean, we were watching it and you're we like, kind of sucks that he can't be on the major league roster, that, that that wasn't going to happen because you saw how much excitement that yeah. he brought to the table and the, uh, the energy that he was bringing to the roster. He was moving over and playing second base, remember? And he was making all these great plays and you got to see the arm. You saw the arm already early on at camp, which, uh, you know, only – a handful of dudes are throwing whoever I forget who it was that he threw out at first base, but he had to go in the hole and just, just a seed across the diamond. And only a couple of guys in the league are going to pull that, pull that throw off. I mean, guys like, uh, you know, Ellie De La Cruz, O'Neill Cruz guys with like the 1% elite arms in all of baseball. were going to do that. And, um, you know, when it comes to people talking about his struggles last year, when he came up, I mean, how many times do we have to say it? Like not everybody comes up and just hits 500, you know, when they first get their first taste of major league baseball. And there's a track record of Mason Wynn, no matter what level he goes to first, his first month and a half usually are pretty slow. And now that he got that taste of major league baseball, what it's like to be in the show last year, I think that's going to go a long way for how he ends up starting uh, the season here in 2024, where He's the man. They, like the Brandon Crawford signing is not something where, well, if Mason struggles, at least we got. That's not the idea here. You <laughs> yeah. know, it, that's not. It, it, the idea is that he is the backup. Mason Wynn is the man, and they're hoping to get 145 to 150 games out of him this year. Yeah. And you have to take into account the feel of the team. I mean, we came up when he came up last year, the season was over. Now yeah. it's, it's the beginning. It's exciting. They'll fit right in. Absolutely. All right. Uh, one more name out of the list. Again, you can read this at redbirdrants.com. Uh, he's got six guys that he's pointed out that thinks poised for a big year in 2024. This one, I, I couldn't agree more with you. And we're talking about second baseman DH Nolan Gorman. What is it about Gorman that, that excites you about 2024? It's got to start with his bat. He has the potential to hit 30 home runs in a full slate of games. He walks at a decent amount, strikeouts a little bit higher than what you'd want, but the home run and the double power offsets that. To me, the most surprising thing about him has been his defense. He was worth minus 12 outs above average his rookie year, and he brought that all the way up to negative two. Still a negative defender, but to improve by that much is pretty significant. Even if he gets just a little bit better, he's automatically a plus defender at second base, which is something that we've been searching for after Colton Wong left. Um, so it all starts with his power, and then it continues on with his growth growth defensively. Now, one thing that uh, Gorman has dealt with was the back issues last year. How concerned are you? Uh, so far at spring training, things have been okay. But again, you know, we're not in the grind of what the season is going to be, where they're expecting him out there, you know, six days a week. So how concerned are you about his, his back issues so far? I'm not overly concerned. I don't know if you've read much. I'm, I'm not fully familiar, but I know he's changed his off-season workouts and his in-season workout plans as well to put less stress on his back. So hopefully that helps alleviate some of the long-standing pain that he felt throughout the season last year. And he's also made some changes to the diet. Uh, yeah. Apparently popcorn was a uh, <laughs> <the> problem. <laughs> he never said what brand it was, but he said that popcorn was, it was an issue with yeah. him. And he's hoping that him cutting back on that said he shedded uh, about 10 pounds already uh, leading into spring training by just kind of switching brands and switching. Cause anybody who works out knows that like popcorn is one of those filler 
snacks that uh you know it's it's always available and it's cheap and you can just keep loading up on it but if you're eating the bad stuff not so good for you if you're going cracker jack style with caramel and stuff on it bad news but uh there's plenty of other ways to go about it so hopefully that makes a difference i don't know if it will but it would be hilarious if popcorn was the reason why his back was having as many issues as it did uh the last couple of years and this was something apparently he's been struggling with since high school which i, yeah. I actually did not know until that was reported this year that uh these are things that have been a problem all the time it's not like it just popped up in the last year and it's all the cardinals training staff's fault yeah right yeah must Which, have been butter butter lovers popcorn there you go yeah, yeah. that that could be it i don't know which one it was i'm sure he's not gonna you know drag him through the mud whoever it was <laughs> but <laughs> when you get uh, a yeah I'm advertising glad contract he, i'm glad he's taking he's taking the steps to 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 switch up the diet a little bit and uh hopefully it'll help him out this year so far no home runs for gorman yet this year but if you had to if you had to make a guesstimate, where do you think he lands this year? Let's say he plays 135 games this year. Where would you? Where do you think he lands home run wise? I'll give him 32. If he plays that full slate of games, I'll give him 32 home runs. I can I can live with that. I can yeah. live with that. Gonna be a lot of strikeouts, but that's just part of it, you know. People who like love Kyle Schwarber and they're yeah. like, look at the power. How come we don't have him or whatever? And like, you got to remember, you got to take all the good with the bad too. Where Schwarber is, you know, he's in the outfield and he's DH yeah. as well. Where Gorman, I, I'm excited about the fact where Gorman is going to be able to do not only second base and DH, but you know, you're probably going to see him over at third base a little bit this year when they try to give uh, Nato a little bit more rest uh, this season as he continues to get older and he was dealing with some back issues last year. So mm -hmm. um, keeping Gorman healthy is going to be very, very important to this team. Once again, RedbirdRants.com, and you can read about all six of the players that, that Thomas chose as guys he thinks are poised to break out here in 2024 and have big seasons. All right, so coming up next, we did this week a couple of prediction episodes, if you will. Uh, I went over the pitching staff, uh, specifically the bullpen, of who I thought was going to make it. But with the Brandon Crawford signing, which has been very fresh in everybody's mind, uh, I want to get your thoughts on what you think that means for the Cardinals position players, who's going to make it and who is going to be the bench bats. We're going to have more with uh, Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com coming up next on Locked on Cardinals. Once again, Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today right now, available on the Free Fire TV channels app. Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com joining us here today, talking some ball. And um, with the Brandon Crawford signing, which we touched on a little bit earlier in the show, um, it's another bench bat. It's another spot on the bench that is now gone where when we, we first started talking about spring training, we hadn't had a Matt Carpenter. We hadn't had a Brandon Crawford. So talking about who was going to be on the bench for the Cardinals uh, was a big question mark. We didn't know. We didn't know what they were going to do for, for these bats. And now a couple of those spots are taken <laughs> and you couple that up with the Tommy Edmond injury news, which I would assume you're like me where, the way things are shaping up, he's not going to be ready for opening day. Would you agree with that? I would, especially if he doesn't get started in games anytime soon. Yeah, and, and it's okay. I, I'm totally fine with them. If he needs to skip the end of March and April and come back fully healthy in May, I'm okay with that. Because you've got guys like you know Dylan Carlson who you should be able to plug in and he can be a starter. You should be able to do that. Uh, but it makes you wonder what they're going to do with the bench bats now that you've got Matt Carpenter and Brandon Crawford. So my prediction, um, I think it was in yesterday's show. I get them confused now, but um, this is what I thought. I got Wilson Contreras and Yvonne Herrera at catcher. We know that's what it's going to be. Uh, you're starting infield normally. Goldie, Donovan, Nato, Mason Wynn. Outfield without Edmund, New Barn left. Dylan Carlson in center, Jordan Walker in right, Nolan Gorman 
your DH. And when he plays second, you know, Donovan will be the DH. That's that's probably what we're looking at. Would you agree? I would, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the bench. Mind you, no Tommy Edmond here. You need 13 guys because I would assume they're going to go with 13 pitchers to start the season because they've already talked about possibly the six-man rotation. They're going to want an extra arm in there. I, it just makes a lot of sense for them with the early grind, uh, the early travels and stuff that they got going on in the beginning of the season. So that leaves three spots <laughs> on the bench with Admin out. Who are you giving those three spots to? Do you dare Thomas Govain cut? Future Cardinals Hall of Famer Matt Carpenter. Um, they won't. Would <laughs> I? Probably. But I don't they won't. Um, it'll be Brandon Crawford, Matt Carpenter, and then Alec Burleson. So unexciting, positionally strange, but it seems to me that those are the three who are gonna fit. Now, what do you say to people who will be like, so all three are gonna be left-handed? We're not gonna have a single right-handed bat on the bench what what would be your comeback to them of why the cardinals would choose to do things something like that i don't have much of a comeback for that one actually um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know um because i think that those three are chosen more so because a matt carpenter is the veteran voice they've been looking for alec burleson deserves it at this point i mean he's done his time in the minor leagues he has the ability to hit in the majors more than likely and then brandon crawford's the backup shortstop which everybody needs so Yes, they're all three left-handed bats, and yes, they're all bench players, but it just seems to be that's the best route for the team. And I pointed out in uh, in our episode yesterday that um, one of the things that maybe everybody should just – maybe we should have added this to one of your uh, – hey, relax, everybody, when it comes yeah. to all the left-handed batters, uh, is that a lot of – you know, the left-handed special, it's not really a thing anymore because you got to get three outs, you know, so – or three hitter rule not outs, but three hitter rule. And the majority, what is it like 70 something percent of pitchers in major league, they're right-handed anyway. So you've got most of your righties are going to be in the lineup every day as is. So having these guys available off the bench as the alternate to somebody who's throwing right-handed, not a bad idea, right? Yeah. And uh, Brandon Crawford splits really aren't that far apart. True. Versus left season, right? I think it's maybe 30, 40 points in his OPS. So nothing too major. Now, let's talk about when Tommy Edmond gets back, whether it's opening day, whether it's later on in the month. What happens then? Because now Dylan Carlson goes down to a bench roll, yep. and that means somebody's got to go. Now, unless they end up getting rid of a pitcher and going to, a, to 12 pitchers, which is a distinct possibility, but that's not a lot of fun for this discussion, Thomas. So <laughs> now you got to get rid of somebody of those three that you kept. What are you going to do? Uh, in a wild world that I imagined last week, I think that Matt Carpenter gets the boot come May, joins the coaching staff, and is one of the first players in a while, at least from what I could find in my research, to retire and then immediately, like within a week or two, become a coach on the same major league team. So I think in a wild case, Matt Carpenter would get cut. You'd have Crawford, Carlson, Burleson, and then Herrera on the bench if Matt Carpenter is not cut, then you lose Burley on the bench and you keep Matt Carpenter on the roster. Yeah, I, I pointed out, like, if Burleson does get the boot back to Memphis, which not the worst thing in the world for him uh, to get him at bats every day and let him play all the time, but I was talking about, like, dude, the Memphis lineup's kind of sick. If you put yeah. Burley down there along with Victor Scott, uh, Luke and Baker, Thomas and JC, Cesar Prieto, Moises Gomez, Jose Fermin, Michael Cian, that's not so bad. It's a lot of experience and talent, yeah. And it's there when and if injuries do happen, because we know it'll happen. So one thing that the Cardinals do have going for them is they've got a lot of depth uh, available, guys who have been to the major leagues and uh, and you would trust to, to be a bench roll guy. If somebody were to go down in the starting lineup, you plug whoever it is that was on your bench, you bring them into the, the starting lineup, and then you have one of these guys where you're not like, uh, I don't know who that guy is. You know who all these guys are. They've been up there for the most part, most of them, and you're familiar with them. So um, I think the Cardinals have put themselves in a pretty good position depth-wise um, throughout throughout the lineup. Like I'm talking about position players and in the bullpen because they were able to accumulate so many arms this offseason that if one or two of them go down, 
it's not going to be end of the world type of things the way it was last year, which it really handcuffed them. Yep. And I know Fangraphs just came out with the depth piece, and the Cardinals had like the second best winning percentage with their depth guys in the league. Yes. Like, yes. Because yeah, they were yeah. saying like if um, like say top ten, I think. Like Arnado goes down or Goldschmidt goes down, the the Cardinals it wouldn't be like catastrophe if yeah. something like that happened. That they've got enough guys that they'll be able to plug them in, and uh, they wouldn't lose all that much, which is uh, great. <laughs> it's yeah. great news because we know how the injury bug likes to find its way to St. Louis each and every year. So, all right, once again, RedbirdRants.com is where you're going to find Thomas Govain. What are some other stories that you got out there right now that uh, the people ought to be on the lookout for? Uh, this is a fun one where I took the the five guys that we added, um, Lance Lynn, Sonny Gray, Brandon Crawford, Matt Carpenter, and I took a time machine and put us back in 2015 to see that we would have the best infield and the best starting rotation with all those guys. But it's 2024. so. <laughs> but it's still fun to go down the road and do yeah, it is. like that, like what if type of scenario. So uh, always good stuff there. So make sure you check out Thomas on uh, on Twitter. X as well as uh, at redbirdrants.com. Fresh new uh, stuff coming out each and every day from him and all of the uh, other talented writers that are, are there, like our buddy Josh Jacobs and company at redbirdrants.com. So, Thomas, as always, thank you so much for stopping in today. Have a great weekend, my friend. All right, you too, JD. Thank you. And thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, give us a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals at JD Sports Radio. And like and subscribe on YouTube so you can help our channel and our love for the Cardinals grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. We'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.